I'm Mark Mallory. I am the Director of Community Development for FC Cincinnati. And I just wanted to get together today to give you an update. One of the commitments that the team made uh, is to give as much information as we can to be as transparent as possible with the community. Today is a press conference that is a part of that effort. Uh, we have held a series of meetings with community groups. We have met with the Community Design Committee. We've met with the Community Coalition. We have met with the Executive Committee of the West End Community Council. We've also met with the full body of the West End Community Council. And we've made several presentations to give them updates on information uh, that is related to the construction of the FC Stadium that will happen in the West End that's scheduled to open in uh, March of 2021. Uh, the construction timeline uh, is that demolition will begin and site prep will start in November. Uh, we are currently scheduled to have a groundbreaking on December the 19th. I'm very excited about that date. Um, foundation, uh, the beginning of foundations, the second quarter uh, of 2019 as again, with the grand opening of March the 1st of 2021. So that is the target date, March the 1st of 2021. That will be a huge day of celebration in the city of Cincinnati. I wanted to give an opportunity, since we're here at uh, Turner, for uh, the vice president of Turner, Dave Spaulding, to give an update and to give some additional information about the construction timeline and schedule. Dave? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about us. I'm Dave Spaulding, Vice President of Turner. Turner uh, has been in Cincinnati since 1903, but since then we've done over 450 stadiums, ha about half of all MLS stadiums. So we're looking to bring that expertise literally into our own backyard here in the West End for FC Cincinnati, which I, I truly will be uh, generational in, in a type of a building. We want to go through uh, quickly a little bit about the update on site and the demo plan and when we're going to start to mobilize. Uh, it's, it's been one of the biggest questions people have asked of when are we going to see out there. So right now, the date for us to start is the week of November 16th, and that's when you'll start seeing site fence go up. Uh, one of the things with that is all of this is a little bit of a draft because we're trying to work with community members. Right now, we're working with Lighthouse. Uh, we're working with the Cincinnati Police District, Taft High School. We want to ensure that if Taft High School football team makes it to postseason, they get to play their home games in Stargell Stadium. So we're working through that right now and also the Cincinnati Ballet and Tri-State. So there could be some variations, but this is a good snap uh, shot of what it is today. So as you'll see on the screen here to my left, we've got things uh, blocked out really into about four different phases of demolition, starting with um, the northeast corner, block one just south of uh, Tri-State. Uh, right now it's a surface parking lot. One of the neat things about that, there's a, there's a large beer cave underneath. So there'll be a lot of site shoring and foundations on, under there. We'll work our way through uh, block two demolition into Stargell. Uh, here, as you see, down to block four. Can you go to the next slide? So one of the things uh, that's been a, a big question, obviously for Turner, the number one concern we have is safety. Safety of our employees, safety of the workers, and uh, obviously safety of the community around. Uh, we've been a member of the community here, being right, right next to the stadium for a long time. It's gonna be our number one focus. Uh, so we wanted to show a little bit on um, the gates and the entrances so people know. We've got gates on all corners um, coming up here central, north and south, and then we'll have gates on the west and the east of the, of the site. Uh, one of the main questions that's been is construction parking. We've got um, several things worked out so that all the construction workers, if you think on a daily basis we could have anywhere from two to 400 people working on this site which is a great thing for the city, but it also causes uh, you know, construction traffic. So we wanna make sure that we have that planned. Right now, the idea is that there are several parking garages that have vacancies throughout the city. We've worked with the city, 3CDC and others, to ensure construction parking so that we're not in where all of the, um, the locals park uh, there in the West End, taking their parking with construction traffic and making sure that it's safe for everyone there. Uh, the other thing with the, um, the, the demo and the site starting, so as we mobilize in mid-November, you'll start seeing some of the buildings and everything going um, in through demo and abatement uh, in the 1st of December. You know, those are all done by licensed professionals. Uh, we have to give Environmental Protection Agency a 10-day notice, um, which has, has already started. Uh, with that, 
Uh, we'll have uh, permits and basically the EPA and OSHA come in and say that there's potential, uh, there's no potential exposure. And what we do is we'll have all the removal certified by in independent 30 party testing labs uh, before it's approved for demo. And it'll be in containment uh, with exposure monitoring so that we make sure that the site is safe for all of the workers and the public. Uh, the next slide, you know, it's just a six month look ahead. If you look at this screen, basically starting here in October, we were, we're already working through electric and cable relocation through the site. Cincinnati Bell has uh, re relocation going on that goes right through the middle of the site. Uh, in November, some of the demo as we spoke about before will begin. And in December, we'll have excavation, site retention, and water line retention. There's a 42 inch water main that runs through the site. That'll be, uh, begin to, the planning's begun. Uh, the relocation will start in December and January there. And then as you see, what I think is usually uh, the biggest uh, tadas of construction starting in March is the auger cast piles and foundations. That's where you actually see the start of construction of the stadium and us starting to come out of the ground uh, building structure in May of 19. Next slide, Bob. So one of the other big focuses, obviously safety first. The second thing is uh, making sure that the local community is impacted by this. Uh, through work and workforce. So what we do is, you know, back in the day, uh, public projects had five primes, so they bid to five people, and those five people bid to everybody. This project, right now, we have over 50 bid packages. So what that does is it breaks the bid packaging down into smaller pieces and portions so that more people can be included in the project. We can have more small business, minority, women-owned business, local business as a part of the project. We have 50 listed up here right now. Looking at it, the way we broke it down, it looks like we're gonna hit over 60 bid packages on this project. And the way we do that, um, we came up with it, we have a community benefit agreement. Uh, basically, our goal on this project is to commit to delivering the project, offering a diverse, uh, diversity of opportunities for all, specifically the Westland community. Our goal on this project is 25% minority business, 7% uh, women-owned business, and 30% small business to be included in this project. Uh, through all phases from demolition to finish and that includes uh, ongoing for the project how do we do that one of the big things is and this is a big project it's a big um, task to accomplish and it's got to be your everyday focus if you're going to deliver on those we look at every single bid package on this project and we break it into dollars per the scope and then we go through our database the port authority's database the cincinnati um, city of cincinnati's database the county's database and we list all of the local minority women-owned businesses and small businesses in those categories so that we can target them and give them access so they know when the bid opportunities are happening so they can come to the table. Wait the next slide, Bob. So what we've done to ensure the hardest part a lot of these is when people, for people to know when the opportunity is and how to get access. So we've created a website. It's up here on the screen. Anyone in the community that has a business or is looking for a business opportunity on this project, they can go to this website. They can enter their information. They can enter their job, their names, their uh, email, phone number. We, at, through FC Cincinnati, through Meese and Elevar Architects, Turner Construction, we are reaching out to anyone that puts information on there to find out what type of business they have, what opportunities they're looking for, and what are their abilities so that we can work with them. Uh, to get them in here. We've met with already 30 different people uh, in the local community. Um, like we showed before, most of the construction activity starts next year, but we've already met with 30 different people um, through this site. Hit the next one, Bob. So finally, you know, one of the things that a lot of the Western residents came to us and said is, what if we can't get access to the internet or get onto this website, what do we do? So we've created uh, basically resource centers here at our office. If you want to give us that same information or have questions or ask, you can come to Turner's office here at 250 West Court Street. Come in, we have forms for you to fill out so we have your information. You can also go to Elevar, who is our local partner, a minority owned uh, firm here in Queensgate. They have an office at 555 Car Street. You can also walk into their office, give them the, your information. That gives you the access for the opportunity. Next slide. And that's our presentation today. If you have any questions, uh, really excited about the project. So again, November 16th start. Uh, the official groundbreaking for the public is December 19th, and we look happy to see you there. Thank you. Any questions?
I'm not sure if we saw in the timeline that was up there before. What about start the stadium as far as trying to get? Are you looking to have the team play in there next season? Are we looking at something that fast or something built? Sure. So um, working with Cincinnati Public Schools, uh, Taft High School will. Right now, the tentative date for us to take over Stargell Stadium is November 16th of this year. Uh, Cincinnati Public Schools is working on where they'll play next year. We've also let them know that if, if Taft High School makes it further in the playoffs where there could be a potential game after that this year, they'll play at their home field. Uh, I, th I believe the last game for Taft is this week or next week. Then the state you know, quarterfinals, regionals, and all that begins. So next season will not be played at the existing Stargell Stadium. Yeah. I would I would point out though that the uh, Cincinnati Public School District decided at some point that they would rather have control of the construction of their own stadium uh, so they reached a deal with FC Cincinnati to receive the money uh, for the construction of the stadium and they will control their own construction and their own construction schedule and timeline. So <clears throat> the, the new start will not be finished in time for We're, we're not building, but that's correct. I mean, just knowing construction and scheduling timelines, even if they bring someone in now, it won't be ready for next season. But understand, I need to emphasize yeah. this, though. That is a decision that was made by Cincinnati Public. When FC was in charge of the construction schedule, that was the goal. Uh, but in the deal reached with Cincinnati Public, they decided that that was not necessarily a priority for them. Do you know where they'll play? That's a question for Cincinnati Public Schools. I don't know that. Will the, uh, community benefit agreement apply to both stadium and FC and CAF? The community benefits agreement that was negotiated with the West End community applies to the work that FC Cincinnati is doing in the West End. Uh, we have expressed to CPS the items that were negotiated in the CBA uh, that extend to the construction of Starja. We've given them all that information. It's up to them as to whether or not they follow it. I will say that just from a philosophy of FC and Turner, from the FC Cincinnati Stadium to the FC Cincinnati Training Facility, the goal of FC and Turner is to have over 20% inclusion on all of our projects, regardless of the, Cincinnati, the community benefit agreement. So we will take those theories and philosophies to the training facility with FC Cincinnati. Uh, you mentioned some of the uh, terms history and everything. What are the what are the big uh, the, the big structures in the city that people would know that Turner that Turner has built? Well, uh, we moved into the city in 1903 buying ferro-concrete with the Ingalls building downtown. I would say in, in recent history, we've built Queen City Tower. Uh, we are building Court and Walnut currently. We've built Paul Brown Stadium. We just did the U University of Cincinnati Nippert renovation. Uh, we just had the opening yesterday of the NKU Health Innovation. We built BB&T Arena. Uh, we did the Athletic Performance Center. Uh, we are right now finishing in November. Uh, the Cincinnati Museum Center Union Terminal uh, Historic Restoration, uh, which was a great project for the city in the West End there as well. Uh, and I, I would tell you there, there's many, many more. I'd, I'd love to tell you every one of them if you want to stick around. Well, that's just in Cincinnati, <laughs> but you've also done about half of the MLS stadiums in the country. Yeah, so we, we've built about 450 uh, new builds and renovations of uh, performance and uh, you know arenas, stadiums across the country. Uh, about 50% of all MLS stadiums that are new and a little bit more than that when you look at the stadiums that they play in that are uh, dual purpose. Can you talk about the reaction, Mark, to the misdesign of the community? What have they said about it? Um, I haven't seen a general reaction to uh, it within the community. In the presentations that we've made, we've received very positive reaction. And it, how final is that? Can you speak to that at all? Sure. So right now I would say it's, it's a um, – it's moving towards the finish line, but it's not the final draft. So, you know, the um, FC had made a commitment to the community that they would take their feedback. So what basically what we're doing is, you know, a typical process, you have a schematic design, um, design development, construction documents. You know, we're at a pretty much schematic phase right now. We're going through programming. So the idea is this is where we're at right now. You know, as you look at this and you put numbers to it, you try to grow how, many, how much capacity and we start making decisions on how much skin is going to be on the building versus can we have another 500 seats. So all of those decisions are being made, but I would say this is close to the landing zone, uh, but it will be tweaked in the upcoming months. And let me just add that the skin on uh, this structure, as I understand it, can change colors. And it can be just about any color uh, within you know, a broad color range. 
Um, during the day, of course, I don't think it would be lit up orange. That would be the potentially the color that it would be lit during game nights. I know this is a technical question, but the rendering kind of shows the light going out into the neighborhood. Is that? Yeah, we, we, we've, had, we've heard that question. Now, I mean, really, really that's uh, architectural license, I think, just showing. The, the whole idea, when you, when you build a stadium and you put a skin around the whole um, building, it really actually makes it a home field advantage. So it, it, the light and the sound actually reverberates back down into the stadium. It's part of the idea of more skin on the building and why they have them in football stadiums. So if you, if you see a high school stadium with typical bleachers and nothing, you hear everything, it's a lot more in the stadium this way. That's... Um, the three D rendering and trying to make it. So it may not actually have that effect. It should not have that effect. Okay. Yeah. Aside from the outside, is there anything unique about the design that's geared towards specifically the team? That's sure, absolutely. So, right now they're going through programming, and I would say what the, what the club has done that a lot of others do, but they've really focused on is the club has gone. Um, we've seen at least uh, twelve different MLS stadiums, <laughs> not just here in the United States, but overseas as well. And what they're trying to do is take best practices from all of those. So they're not going to these stadiums and just looking at um, what the skin looks like. They're going to each one of these stadiums and asking the operating folks, what makes the best game day experience for our fans? They're, we're looking in the locker rooms and what makes the best game day experience for our, um, the employees that work there, for the athletes that are playing there. So things like the, the Bailey, uh, making sure that they've got, you know, the Bailey was a great asset to FC Cincinnati, making sure that uh, they can focus on the game and have great seats. They're looking at the amenities and those type of things. But really, point of sale, how do you get in easy? How do you get to um, food? How do you get to restrooms? Those type of things. Bringing best practices from all of the other places, um, from Kansas City and D.C. and L.A. to the stadium. So the idea, when you come into the stadium, it's a great experience, not just when you're looking at it. I, I apologize. I think you were addressing this when I came in. I apologize for that. What did you say about the parking? Where is that going to be? And has that all been figured out yet? So, part, we were, we actually when you came in, we were talking about parking for construction workers, but we can, okay. we can talk a little bit about parking during game day right now. Is it, it is being figured out, but the, the idea right now is that there will be parking on site, around site, and then very similar to, you know, one of the things of an of a urban uh, stadium that you really look for is that you want people to merge on the city. You don't want to have all the parking there because you want people at the banks and in the West End and the OTR. Uh, bringing all of the, the business to the retail and the shops and everything. So the, the parking will have parking on site, uh, enough for you know, media and some uh, people for the game day, but we do want some of the parking spread out throughout the city. So don't all that, the details of exactly where it's being, like you couldn't pinpoint on a map today where, where, <coughs> excuse me, where it's gonna be. No, I mean, right now, it's theory. I mean, right now, the idea for a lot of the parking is, you know, there's, there are existing garages with vacancies. When you look at Washington Park, WCET, in the future, as many of you have heard, you know, there's potential at the tri-state area for a future parking garage. Uh, we are doing studies right now on some underground parking on the stadium site. Uh, there's some staff parking and, you know, 100-plus parking on the west side of the stadium, and that was actually through feedback of the west end of giving a little bit of separation from the stadium and the public from the site, because that'll be more for media and um, FC employees and things like that. Uh, but then, you know, they're working with all the other local garages to find parking. Uh, parking in the city is not abundant during the day, but most of FC Cincinnati's games are Saturday nights at 7.30 or Wednesday nights at 7, uh, and that's when a lot of the garages open up and have vacancies. Is, that, is the stadium sunk in below grade? I, I can't tell from the right So right now, the, the current, Central Parkway to John Street is about 15 feet difference in elevation. So we're using that elevation to set the bowl. So if you go right now at about Central Park, not Central Parkway, Central Avenue, the elevation of Central Avenue should be the elevation of the pitch, give or take, when we're finished. All right. All right. If there's nothing else, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you, you coming today.